Hey folks, welcome to 3.2, which is focusing on amending the Constitution. Now, in this presentation, we're just going to go over the process for how an amendment is added to the Constitution, why it is so difficult, and also at the same time, um, basically explain why there are only 27 amendments instead of thousands that have uh, cropped up over the um, years since 1789 or 1788 when the, uh, New Hampshire was the last state to ratify the Constitution. Now, let's get into it. All right. All right, so there are three main parts of the Constitution. One, the preamble, which is basically the introduction, just kind of uh, laying down the purposes and functions of government, which we established in the last uh, presentation. Two, the various articles. The articles are extremely important because each, the first three articles, um, these the first four actually outline each of the uh, three branches of government, the executive, the judicial, and the, and the legislative, um, and as well as the powers that they have in each article. There's also the amendments, which is like the addendums, the things that are added on or tacked on at the bottom, which basically make the Constitution longer, but also establish more rights. And these have come about um, from a variety of issues. For example, the first 10 amendments were concerning the freedom of speech and assembly, um, freedom of religion, things such as that came about in, uh, that were finally ratified in 1791 as part of the Bill of Rights because the Anti-Federalists really wanted it added to, uh, to the Constitution. So the, the new the new country basically had a, it was his first test of this amendment process that we're about to get into. Now there's 27. Um, two of them, uh, one of them extended the right to vote uh, for African-American males. And then the, and it wasn't until 1919 uh, or 1918 with the 19th Amendment when uh, women were granted the right to vote. So each amendment has a very important role. It reflects the time periods in which they were created, reflects the issues of the day. For example, there was one amendment that gave 18-year-olds the right to vote. So folks like you, um, basically, there was a protest about the Vietnam War saying that if 18-year-olds were able to be drafted, they should also be allowed to fight, or sorry, allowed to vote. So if they're old enough to fight, they're old enough to vote is what the the, the protest was about. And at the same time, it actually created a national movement that actually ended up in an amendment to the Constitution. Now, what makes an amendment last? Um, the first thing that you have to do is you have to propose the amendment in Congress. There's two different processes, but the most important one that you should know about is the fact that someone has to propose, almost like a bill, they have to propose an amendment in, in the federal Congress. Both houses have to approve of it with a two-thirds vote, so it has to vote by a majority vote of two-thirds out of the uh, uh, 435 people in the House of Representatives and then 100 in the Senate. Has to pass by two thirds vote in the House, two thirds uh, vote in the Senate, and then from there it moves into states. Basically, what they're trying to do, uh, the the each state then has to vote on whether or not that amendment will be added to the state constitution as well as to the federal government. If two thirds out of the states ratify or say yes to the amendment, then the uh, amendment is officially added to the federal constitution. There's a third step. It becomes a new amendment. So um, that's the short end of the process. I'll, I'll explain a little bit further right here. So <clears throat> and when it comes to ratifying amendments, two thirds have to be have to vote yes in both houses of Congress. It then goes to three fourths of an approval for all states legislatures or three fourths of an approval of the state, state convention. So basically, seven, uh, 38 states have to have a convention or some in their uh, state legislature, the state legislature, they have to all vote yes on this amendment. There, are, those are the two different ways that a amendment can be passed in a state. Now, there's also the reverse end. What happens if there's like a lot of states that want an amendment, but it's not started by the federal Congress. Two thirds, so 38, state legislators can call for a national convention in which they basically send delegates, kind of like the constitutional convention. They send the delegates there and uh, three fourths, with three fourths of the approval of all state legislatures across the land, so 38 out of 50 states now, um, or three fourths approval at a state convention, either the legislature or the convention, um, then the amendment is passed. For a proposal to start going through, you have to have two thirds of the votes of both houses of Congress, and then to a national convention at the request of two thirds of state legislatures. So it can either come from the federal government with both houses uh, having two thirds of a vote saying, yes, we agree to put this issue before the states, or it comes from the states to the federal government where two thirds out of state 
conventions or legislatures basically decide that this is a very important amendment. We think that we want to put it up for the proposal to vote um, to add this to the Constitution. So then it can either come from the federal government to the states or it can come from the states to the federal government. Ratification also has two methods, but state legislatures, this would be like uh, the state, uh, Indiana State Congress, Indiana State House of Representatives or Indiana State Senate. Um, if they voted yes, both houses, then um, one state would have, have ratified the amendment. However, you need 38, three fourths of 50 states. You need 38 uh, state legislatures to say yes, or 38 states to basically held uh, hold like ratifying conventions, which you can look uh, can take different forms. One, uh, everyone can vote by popular vote, or it can be uh, basically at a convention where different counties like send delegates to the con state convention from there. If they vote yes, then that state ratifies it. And overall, 38 states have to ratify it in order for it to be adopted. So here's just a different way of saying it. Step one, Congress proposes a new amendment. This is the one of the processes. Two thirds of the Senate passes the bill. Two thirds of the House also pass the bill. The proposed, proposed amendment is then sent to the states to vote. State legislators then choose to either accept or deny the amendment. If they accept it, it's called ratifying. Basically means you're voting yes. 38 of the states must ratify the amendment in order to be for it to be fully added to the Constitution. And then the question is, why is it so difficult for someone to propose an amendment? Why can't we just have an amendment on... Um, people should not be allowed to experience homelessness or people should not be denied the right to vote based on yada, yada, yada. I mean, with all the issues that we have in our society, why is it so hard to get an amendment passed in order to protect and provide for the common good as we covered in the last presentation? What can we do to make, to change things when the amendment process to make things for sure legal in the constitution, which is the law of the land, why is it so hard? It mainly comes down to this. The framers of the Constitution believed that, again, majority rule would be the best way to decide or that government should follow the, the majority rule, that government should follow the whims and wishes of the majority of people rather than uh, be based by a powerful few or be held onto by a powerful few. So the idea was that if it's so difficult to amend the Constitution, that means at least 75 percent of states, 75 percent of people possibly want this ratification, this amendment to be um, processed. So that means that it must be extremely important enough to be added to the Constitution. So anything that actually ends up in the Constitution is a very, very powerful um, issue. It's a very powerful, powerful statements within the amendments. And so that's why it's so difficult is because you can't just have anything be put in the Constitution. If not, then um, many different laws could exist and it could be contradictory. And um, but that way, in this process, we ensure that only the most important things that everyone agrees on, again, majority rule, can benefit the common good and be added to the Constitution. All right, if you have any further questions about the assignments, about anything, reach out to me at ksanders at perryschools.org. And I hope you all, whether you're watching this in the morning or the evening or wherever it is you're watching it, I hope that you all have a beautiful evening.